I am very pumped about this one. Good morning, YouTube. What's up, everybody? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. If you thought my one balloon was weird, then you probably think that I'm totally crazy because behind me is completely covered in balloons. Uh, it was my birthday on Thursday, so my fiance got me a whole bunch of balloons and there's also balloons above my head for celebrating 10K uh, subscribers on YouTube, so um, we're basically a party city here. We're talking about a highly anticipated shoe today. In fact, the first version of this shoe was my favorite shoe of 2019, back when I first made my YouTube channel. And therefore, I was very eager to see if this second version would live up to the hype of the first. Sometimes the second version does, and sometimes it doesn't. The too long, don't read version is, I think that this is a really good upgrade to the one, but there is one thing that I do wanna point out and talk about, so we will get to that, and we'll get to all the things about the Rebel V2, but first, of course, I gotta run in it, duh. Well, I actually just ran in it, as you can see. Um, but, but you get what I mean. Let's roll the footage. Before we get started today, I want to let you know that this shoe was sent to me by New Balance and Running Warehouse. However, neither company is going to see this video before you. I'm not getting paid to make this video and no one can tell me what to say. All my opinions that I say are from my brain. The Rebel V2 is 5.9 ounces for a women's size 8 and for my size 10 and a half women's, this shoe came in at 7.1 ounces and that's pretty light for a big old 10 and a half size shoe. It has a six millimeter drop, though I do not know the exact measurements. And I'm gonna give the Rebel V2 a true to size. It's a little bit short, just a tad for me, um, but I think if it was any longer, it would be sloppy, so I'm gonna give a true to size here. The Rebel V2 does away with the Rebel V1's booty construction, all one piece. Here we're using a traditional lightweight engineered mesh. It's extremely breathable in that forefoot. You're definitely gonna feel some air passing through. In the midfoot, we do have a big New Balance logo that is acting as an overlay. And if we go to the back, we have a deconstructed heel counter, New Balance is calling it, that they say provides support without adding any extra weight. I will attest to the fact that it does keep your heel in place. I really liked version one's upper of the Rebel, I'm not gonna lie. I enjoy that the booty construction was so locked down onto your foot and so snug that you barely needed these laces. However, looking back on the shoe now, I am not crazy about the material that they use. It is pretty coarse and they use some stitched on overlays, which is kind of, in my opinion, a bit outdated looking. And the heel counter has some stitching that didn't cause me irritation, but it's just kind of unnecessary. You know, we can do better than this. And I think that the Rebel V2 does do better. Yeah, we're losing that booty construction, but you're getting a much more comfortable material here in the forefoot and midfoot. There's no stitching on the heel counter that could cause irritation. In fact, the heel counter is very comfortable with uh, some minimal padding in the back. I also think this material is gonna help many different foot types be able to get into the shoe because it's not quite as snug as the first version is. 
If you turn the shoe over this way, you'll see that uh, there is a standard amount of room, I feel, in the forefoot and in the midfoot. It gets a bit, a bit narrow, uh, but it's not too bad. And again, I think that this is gonna help uh, any foot type kind of get in the shoe. The tongue in version two is different in the sense that we have a tongue now. We didn't have that in version one. Again, it was just part of that booty construction. Uh, here it is a very soft material, didn't cause me any problems. However, it's not gusseted and it does come up a bit high, so it can kind of flop around a little bit. I wish that New Balance had made this a gusseted tongue, such a nice feeling premium shoe. I felt like maybe that could only improve it. And one more nitpick of the upper of version two is that there isn't another loophole for laces. I wish there was. Uh, because I did feel a tiny bit of heel slip in my left shoe. And I feel like if it just had another loophole, maybe like back here, it would only help improve that. Um, you know, it wasn't a deal breaker. It wasn't like terrible heel slippage, but just something I think could have been fixed with another loophole. But that's it. I had no issues with hot spots, blisters, or irritation. And honestly, I do think that this is a pretty big improvement over the first version. And I'm obsessed with this colorway. Now onto the midsole, New Balance is using their enhanced, new and improved feel cell foam here. This is what we'll see in the RC Elite version two, and it feels a lot more like the TC and the first version of the RC Elite. It's a lot softer, a lot bouncier, and just feels like an overall better foam than what we saw in the first version. The Rebel version one was the first fuel cell shoe that I tried. Um, after that, a couple months later, I tried the TC, and then I tried the RC Elite in the summer. I thought that this shoe felt really, really good when I first got it, and I felt that pop and that snap, and I also, did feel the cushioning and protection that it provided. Fast forward to trying the TC and the RC Elite, I realized that they those two shoes had a much better fuel cell foam. And I even said in my videos, I there's got to be something that they did different to this because it doesn't feel anything like this shoe. This feels like it has the more enhanced version of the fuel cell foam that we've seen from those other shoes. And the way this fuel cell foam feels makes this feel pretty sad. I have two runs in the V2 so far. I have a six mile tempo and then I have a three or like a 5K kind of easy-ish run that I did today. And then right after I finished running in this shoe, I ran in the first version. And this feels extremely firm, like there's barely any cushioning underfoot compared to this. I really loved version one of the Rebel because it was great for tempo days, you know, days you wanna pick up the pace, go a little bit harder. But with the way this foam feels in the second version of the Rebel, I think that it just opens up the gates for a much more versatile ride. Uh, because of how soft it is, I think this can go long. I think it can do daily training. I mean, it felt totally fine today going at like my steezy pace, I guess you could say. And with the bounce of the foam, it does want to pick up the pace. I had no trouble during my six mile tempo run keeping and maintaining that more up tempo pace. And if I did, it was my fault, not the shoes. Another great thing about version two is that we got rid of that weird flare outward on the lateral side of the shoe. Taking a look here, I am still pronating a bit, but it's not quite as harsh as it was in the first version. There is just one thing here that I noticed and want to point out for the people who do have the first version of this shoe. In the first version, I feel a pretty snappy feeling in the forefoot of this shoe. And if I take it and kind of bend it, you can see how fast it snaps back. It's a very snappy, quick ride. I'm not feeling that same amount of snap that I did in the forefoot. And now that's not a bad thing necessarily. I think what's happening here is that we're relying more on the enhanced foam, how much more bouncy and responsive it is than the construction of the shoe, how much it curves upward, I suppose. I don't mind it. I really like this shoe and I think it's gonna be one of my favorites of the year. Uh, but if you are a person who loved that snap in the forefoot of Rebel V1, then you might have an issue with Rebel V2. But with that said, I just think the midsole of the second version is far better, far more advanced and improved than version one. And now I just think it's a much better option for people who want one shoe to do it all. I think that because of this new foam, that's going to be possible in version two. If we turn the Rebel V2 over, you'll see that we have New Balance's Endurance rubber here. 
We saw this in the prism, another fuel cell shoe by New Balance. The forefoot of the shoe is covered with the endurance rubber. It dips a little bit into the lateral side of the midfoot. And then we got some wrapping around the heel. I'm digging this material. It's tacky and sticky and everything that a rubber should be on a running shoe. The traction is great. And yeah, I have really nothing bad to say about it at all. In fact, the first day I took the shoe out, it was kind of rainy and a little bit wet and slick on the roads. And it held up just fine. I had no problems with it. If we compare the two here, I didn't have a problem with this. It's blown rubber, it's kind of crystallized looking, and I thought the traction was great. I think the traction on this shoe is better. The New Balance Rebel V2 is $129.95 on runningwarehouse.com, which I think is a steal for this shoe. You got a versatile shoe here that can go fast, cushioning provides you for the distance, and yeah, I don't know, run, don't walk. If you believe me and you're interested in picking up a pair of the New Balance Rebel V2, then go to the link in the description of this video, click that link and pick up your own pair. Keep in mind that is an affiliate link with Running Warehouse, however, that doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can keep making these videos and you can keep buying running shoes. There could be worse habits, I suppose. So yeah, if you can't tell, I'm super jazzed up about this shoe. I think it's a big improvement. I really, really like it. And now I'm just super confused about what my favorite shoe of 2021 will be. I just feel like they keep throwing all these really good shoes at us, some that I haven't even gotten to yet on the channel. And I just don't know what to pick anymore. I think it's gonna be another shoe that makes it to 50 miles pretty damn quick. Well, that concludes my first run impressions of the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel V2. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe. And when you're done with all that, hit the notifications bell down below so you can find out every time I upload a new video. I mean, come on, this is just a beautiful color. I have some more videos for you next week, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like Heller. See you next time. Ruby's it. Good girl. Good girl. Say bye to your friends. <laughs>